Hello to everyone, happy to be here. My name is Paula Makarov, I'm DubDev. We are a development studio dedicated to work on protocols and applications based on the Ethereum blockchain. We also promote Ethereum ecosystem mostly in Eastern Europe. So, today I'm going to talk about TCR or Token Curated Registry. I'm wondering if there is any who haven't had a chance to read about TCR. But let us quickly recap what is it about. So TCR is a concept that which provides a way to curate and maintain a list, as simple as that. So m more technically, you can think about it like an unsorted set of items curated by token holders. Uh, there are three roles, three group of individuals who are interacting somehow with the registry. So this is one our to uh, customers who doesn't need to have any tokens in order not to participate in the game. They just um, are interested in the content provided by each specific registry. We also have applicants. It's somebody who wants to get under the list. And for, do for doing that, they're going to need tokens from the each specific registry that will help them to put a deposit to be reviewed by the token holders. And token holders basically have economic incentives to curate, to maintain the list, to be on the right quality that customers actually w would, like to do, would like to consume the information. So let's speak uh, just an uh, example like universities. So in this case, university might be applicants who would like to get under the list. And parents or students who are choosing an university to apply for might be customers. So uh, under the hood, basic TCR consists of uh, three uh, main uh, smart contracts. The first one is ERC-20 standard smart contract who issues token for each specific registry. And another one is the smart contract for the registry itself who track the state of the registry on the blockchain. And we also have the government smart contract that uh, um, keep eye on how the token holders going to curate the list. Uh, currently, there are six parameters, which also can be challenged by the uh, token holders to be reviewed. So you can set up it whatever up to your needs. Um, once you have it, most likely you're going to need some mechanist uh, to vote, built in uh, smart contracts called PLCR, but feel free to use other, uh, any other solutions like Futar here. Guys from Level Key did a great job on it, and so you also can can use like smart contracts, whatever you want. Um, so once you have it, most likely you're gonna need some, um, and you want to build or to try it out for your product. Most likely you're gonna need some sort of UI uh, UX framework that would allow you as well, your customers to integrate somehow with the TCR. There are already a few solutions. One of them is our solution called EasyTCR. At this stage, I would like to thank Consensus and Joseph Lubin and Mike Goldgen, who is the curator of the white paper for the smart contract, for providing us the support to make it happen. I truly believe that will uh, reduce the pain and make life for the community more easier. So we open source it. Here's the link to the media article. You can go uh, read through how it works. There is also a link to GitHub, so feel free to clone it and fork and uh, to set up to your needs. So why it's useful? It operates uh, literally with any kind of data, meaning you can work with uh, generic data. It's decentralized, meaning on, on only your web clients need to be hosted on the server. Uh, we use a config file, JSON config file, that is stored in APFS. And all constant information, you can slightly change it um, regarding your needs. So we truly believe that meet that requirements to be as centralized as possible is very important. And uh, very proud they, they get it. We also provide a feature TCR of TCRs, meaning once you have a set of TCRs, you can create a nasty TCRs from that. And it's pretty easy to set up. So all you're going to need is Node.js, Git, and execute through line of commands, and you will be ready to go. Um, so uh, I would like to dwell on two particular 
things that I think is very crucial for the ecosystem as well. We all know that user experience interacting with application based on blockchain is slightly different uh, to what um, we, are, we are using right now. So right now we have here a toolbar for each particular listing and a toolbar telling you to execute an action. So let's say to apply, to be on the list, you will, ex you will need to execute at least two transactions. One to pre-approve tokens for your NC20 contract, and another actually to execute the um, action itself. Here we have this load bar. We're telling you what's happened on the blockchain side. Uh, we all know the, some issues with capability, and it, it, it can take time for you actually to execute transaction. And here on the interface level, we already letting the user know what happened right now with, the, um, with all this uh, track of transactions he will need execute. Let's pick another example, like if you want to vote for someone, you will need to execute three transactions to make the action happen. One to brain proof token, another to exchange it to the token units, and actually to execute the, uh, the vote. So I think it's my, uh, I truly believe we need some standardizations concerning the UI for the applications that work on the blockchain. And I think like our approach might be good solutions uh, or the cont contributions to think about it more, more deeply. So here, <laughs> please meet the team. Uh, very proud to be part of it. They are actually somehow here around, so feel free to reach out. And they are pretty much happy to, uh, to tell more about the TCR solution. Ode, uh, product designer, Dima. Our engineer, 22 years old, still tried to get his degree on the computer science, and Anna, uh, who provides us also support the strategy and marketing for the, for the projects. So currently, there is more than 50 projects integrating the TCR to the projects. The first one was Edgechain. They released on mainnet in April this year. It's a, basically it's a marketplace for advertisers and publishers to find each other. There is others like Aragon, Bounty Networks, Ocean Protocol, Token Foundry, and I was cons uh, spoke of consensus, of consensus, even Spark Chain. Try to find a way to implement it. So, actually, uh, basic TCR or binary TCR, meaning you can be in and out. It's only one approach to curate the data. Um, as we already saw, there is nested TCR, meaning TCR of TCRs. There's layer TCR approach. Then, um, then it depends on your um, reputation, what impact you're going to have on the registry. Once you're getting better and your reputation uh, going to improve, the more impact you're going to have on the registry. Continuous curation and the key feature, bonded curve, its approach that can create the price for the token based on the token circulation. So token engineering can have approach more engineering UI, and the key component is um, optimization design. Non-fungible token will leave it for the panel, but basically it's, uh, it's ability for a ERC-7 to non-fungible token to be represented by a smart contract ERC-20 token itself. And uh, you can mix that whatever you want. I truly believe that TCR might be a pretty good playground for any DAOs. Why? Because it's pretty low entry point as, as well as exit strategy of the TCR. So once you have this crowd of people who are pretty good to work together on one particular registry, maybe you can el elaborate them get to give the opportunity to work on some government system and issues. Uh, attacks. Uh, there is a few, so um, TCR is token-based, it's not individual-based, meaning one vote, one, um, one token, one vote. And it's also extremely behavior and time-sensitive, meaning in a chain case, you have seven days. One uh, application may, uh, applied, you have a token holder same day to go and review application. By default, it will manage to get into the list once some of the token holders would put another deposit and uh, to challenge it. So the night of service attack, it's pretty easy. You can apply as many applications as you want and hope that 
Uh, token holders will not manage that to go through all of them and just to pick the right uh, to be challenged. Uh, token economy, also like how, uh, how to make the token work. So here might be approached like randomly to issue the tokens to someone, to somebody you think might be a good fit to curate the recent information you are apt to, or you can use curation market. Once you see somebody who is pretty good in predicting what, uh, what value will bring each particular listing to the registry, you can issue the token to these particular individuals and hope uh, he will bring, he do the same for the registry. Government parameters, so like on the theoretical level, it's totally broken. So let's say you have um, application period if somebody can challenge it and to set it to be like 100 years, meaning no one application will make it to get into the list. But uh, once token holders behave based on the economical incentives, on the practical level, it's not, not that likely to be happening. So what you will need just to increase the deposit itself so to be put it that this sign co this kind of attack can be pretty expensive um, about future development one again I truly believe that user experience is a crucial thing for massive adoption application based on blockchain and um, we did we researched uh, pretty long on the way how how to structure the interface I think our solution can can be like uh, can be thought like one solutions to be implemented and to get uh, standard government uh, also we just need more use cases to find the right way how to curate a list so let's say right now we have three parameters um, but um, it depends also on the re registry you can have the registry of subjective items or s objective items I think we're going to discuss it on the panel, but it's like uh, another use case for even token holders how to curate the registry itself. So gamification, I really think that all three groups of participants, token holders, applicants, and customers will need to communicate with each other just because they have the same uh, goal to keep the registry of the data as high as possible. Um, maybe we need to provide some kind of social platform that will allow them to exchange information. Uh, Multistick registry, it's more like, after, um, it's more like, uh, so let's say you have a registry trying to find out what the next earthquake will happen. And um, for the majority, it's pretty difficult to define where it will happen. But we can review the people who might be educated actually to take decisions. So we can have one registry ele elevating these people because we can slightly change their experience, references, study, whatever, and just accept, uh, expecting for them to send their signatures to the registry of these locations their next earthquake might happen. So it's more like authority. Um, algorithm. Social choice theory is a study for how the crowd make decisions. So I truly believe that we need to look more deeper in that approach. And also sustainable growth plans, how to reduce speculations and how to incentivize token holders to be more long-term visitors instead of follow the crowd and try to get a word for each particular vote. Uh, that's it. Finally, I would like to invite all of you to Kiev, Ukraine, September 16, 15. We're going to organize a hackathon. Um, the, we actually, April this year, 16 of uh, April this year, we organized in Kiev, Ukraine, a, ha a workshop, and it brought more than 20 opinion makers from the Ethereum ecosystem from around the world, and it had a, a very good impact on the development ecosystem in Eastern Europe in Eastern Europe and truly believe that this conference will also contribute to the growth of interest to the Ethereum technology. Thank you.